everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you a tag that I made for the hashtag event from the International Crafters Facebook group. This month it's hashtag International Art, and so of course I'm going to do something with a uh, Mexican type of influence, and <laughs> because that's my favorite. Um, just wait till. Dia de los Muertos comes up. <laughs> That's my really, really favorite. But this time, I'm going to make a drawing of a folklorico dancer. Um, that's the Mexican ballet, basically. Uh, pointed toes, very exaggerated movements. Very, very bright colors. Probably the reason that I'm attracted to all things Latino is that for one, I live in Arizona, which is basically North Mexico. And for two, I love bright colors and they just, they always have such amazingly bright outfits when they dance, like bright red, bright green, bright, you know, I just, I really like that. So I did my original drawing here in uh, some graphite pencil, my mechanical dra drafting pencil, and then I'm going over it with my illustration pins, those are the Faber-Castell pit pins in their little wallet. And I'm using the medium for most of it, and then for the face and some of the details, I'm going to use the extra fine tip. Then, um, once that's all complete, I will dry it. I've been drying it lately. <laughs> because I'm having problems with smearing and I'm still having problems with smearing even though I dried it. Uh, I think there's just gunk on my eraser. I don't know. But anyway, um, erased the pencil lines and now I'm going to do a little bit of the background. For the background I wanted to give the idea or impression of the Mexican paper flags, the papel picado. Um, they're often banners or sometimes they're individuals, big ones and they're basically like a tissue paper that has been cut. Um, I don't know if that what they use to cut it, but uh, they're really pretty and you often see them at celebrations where people are dancing, so I thought it would be cool to try to imitate that. So I'm using a, a cutout stencil that has a lot of fine detail on the background using the very bright Dilutions lemon yellow colored um, paint and then I have a napkin here that has some butterflies on it and you often see butterflies on the the papel picado flags um, I don't know why but I like butterflies anyway so I thought maybe putting one of those on there plus it the napkin kind of had that same type of a look like a solid color with cutouts in it is what it kind of looked like so I decided to decoupage that on as well using some liquid matte medium from Liquitex and um, I cut it out from the napkin using my water barrel brush you could use just a regular brush with water but it's a good way to pull apart napkins or tissue paper in shapes that you want also works great on mulberry paper if you ever use that um, so that's what I did is put on the little butterfly and then I'm going to start coloring in my dancer and I'm using the Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons you know they're my favorite I've told you guys that a million times um, and I'm writing the colors particularly the, the colors for the skin because people ask me that a lot like what colors do you use, use for skin and the the answer to that changes dependent on what the nationality is of the person that I'm coloring. And so I'm writing them down on the, the um, deli paper that I have in the background to reduce glare. I'm writing that down so that you'll know which colors that I used. I think at some t point I'm coloring and I forget to, to write down the colors. <laughs> but for the skin tones I did remember. So that says ochre in case you can't read it. The second one I used was ochre. Then I used a Venetian red, which is kind of a terracotta color, which is one of my favorites, actually. That's why it's so dull. It needs to be sharpened. But instead of, because this is so tiny, 
instead of putting them right on to the paper. I'm using my water barrel brush to pick up the color off of the crayon itself directly and then put it on with that. And then I'm also using some titanium white acrylic paint as well to do highlights and kind of seal it in a little bit. And um, then I switched to a teeny tiny brush to do her lips and cheeks because it's so tiny. I don't think I mentioned this tag is cut out of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, which is a heavyweight watercolor paper. So it does absorb in the color quite a bit, which makes it pretty easy to blend. Um, that one is scarlet that I used on the lips and cheeks and then I added a little bit of color to one of her shoulders and the top of her head. That one I didn't write down, it's black. I thought that was pretty evident. And I'm having a little bit of trouble of the black wanting to bleed into her face, which is why I keep touching it to try to wick up the water off her forehead. And then I had to touch it up because it was gray. Her forehead turned gray. <laughs> I didn't think that was good. And then now I'm uh, dealing with her eyes. I kind of made her eyes not white anymore because I went over them accidentally with the flesh tone colors. So then I had to whiten them back up with the teeny tiny brush and then put a little brown inside of her irises because she has brown eyes. So once I'm done with all the skin, then I start coloring everything else. And um, right now I'm still using the Neo colors. And then I get out these brush markers. And I at one point had thought to myself that I should make my I should get a bunch of the the um, Aquash water barrel brushes and fill them up with liquid watercolor on the inside and make my own brush markers. But then I found these. These are from Japan, and I will put the link in the description box below down there where it says see more. Um, I got them from Amazon. I get tons of my art supplies from Amazon because I don't like to go out and shop and I don't have uh, really great places to shop either. So um, I'll put the links to these markers. They weren't very expensive. But they have the same type of a nylon bristle brush as my water brushes do. It's just they're already filled up with color. So they're kind of fun and they're water soluble so you can use them as a watercolor marker where you can blend if you want to and uh, blend the colors together and um, blend them with water. So I just went for them instead of the neo colors. I don't know why. I wanted really bright solid color um, on the dress because that's what it would look like. It's It would be made out of cotton sewn together in really bright colors. And then her blouse would be white, obviously. It might have embroidery on it, though. I didn't put any embroidery around the neck. I probably should have. So then I go to the black one to color in the hat, um, sombrero. And it's one of those black felt ones, not the straw kind. With all the gold embroidery and everything on it. Maybe those are more formal, I'm not sure. And then I use the gray marker to just kind of shadow around the white areas, um, the ruffles on the inside of her skirt and around the white shirt. Because white isn't actually white, it's actually uh, shades of gray. <laughs> I don't know if it has 50 shades or not, <laughs> but it's definitely made out of shades of gray, not just white. So, got to do it that way. Then I'm going back in with some more neo colors and doing some shading, uh, color on color shading. So a dark red, and I think it was alizarin crimson, and then. Um, that's where I stopped remembering to put the other colors, but I used a darker yellow orange and then a, a darker green just to add color on color shadows. 
I'm not sure which ones they are, sorry. <laughs> but if you buy the big container of the near colors, you'll get a lot of the colors. If you want a lot of flesh tones, though, you might have to order them individually or else order the humongous set of neo colors. I wish I had the humongous set of neo colors. <laughs> and then I just use some of that acrylic paint and I go and like kind of um, pat, 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 pat onto the ruffles on the underside of her skirt to make them stand out a little bit, but it's hard to see in the video. And then I've got some oil pastels here. These are just inexpensive ones from Michaels, the Artist Loft. And I'm just going around and beefing up the yellow that's just directly around the girl to give her kind of a glow and then blending it with my finger. And then darkening in the shadow down here on the ground. Um, and then I go around the butterfly with some blue like it's kind of a, the idea of a blue sky and then around the corners edges of the tag as well just blending in that with my finger and I decide that I'm going to need a little bit of splatters just to kind of bring together everything so this is a deco art um, mister, uh, mixed media, mi media line mister, I think. They're permanent. That's the interesting thing about them. And there's not very many colors. They need to get more colors, but they're permanent when they're dry, which just about every other ink spray is water soluble. My friend who lives in Germany told me about another brand of permanent ones, Marabou, I think she said, but I looked and I tried to find them and you can't get in the United States. So I was very disappointed because I wanted more colors of permanent spray. <laughs> and then I of course have my Posca pen in white and I'm adding some little like stitchy lines in between the layers of the skirt and then adding some highlights here and there in her hair, in her eyes, um, stitches on the sombrero, you know, because you do. Then I've got a black background. I'm going to glue my card to the black background because I like a border. Sorry, it's not a card, it's a tag. <laughs> I like borders on cards too. <laughs> I like borders on everything. I, I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> and so the black border sets it off nicely and then I punch it and then I'm going to get some fibers to put in the hole. This is sari ribbon, silk sari ribbon. And then I've got some rickrack, which I thought was appropriate. And I'm using the yellow, green, red theme, of course, from her clothing. And that pretty much does it for this tag be sure to type in hashtag international art to find more internationally themed art out there and don't forget to thumbs up subscribe comment share all those things really help me and thanks for watching that's it for me bye bye